Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. And today my friend Michael has brought over a really cool car. This is one I've watched him refine over the last couple of years. And it's, uh, it's a badass. It's two cars in one. What you're seeing here is a 67 GT500, but it's not. Actually underneath this car is all modern Mustang. Suspension, chassis, engine, electronics, ABS, traction, all the, all the modern stuff we love. Um, but look at it. I mean, we're looking at a 67 GT500. He's kind of taken the concept of Singer with Porsche, Icon with the FJs, and the Broncos, and he's doing it with Mustangs. And I absolutely love where he's headed with this company. Um, this is the 67 GT500 from Mag Motors. We're gonna do our usual thing, get you guys into the, the details. Michael's here with me, so we're gonna talk through everything he's done to bring this car to where it's at. And I'm super stoked because I get to drive it. And I've been wanting to drive this car for a couple of years now. So this is gonna be a blast, you guys. So sit down, hold on, because here we go. All right, you guys, well, here we go for a cruise in my friend Michael's GT500, GT500. What do I mean by that? Well, as you can tell, when you look at the body of this car, you're looking at a 67 Shelby GT500. But what you can't tell by looking at this car until you look deeper into it is that it's a modern day Shelby GT500. Isn't that what it is underneath? Basically 2012 to 2014 chassis that we use to rebody. So you're driving a brand new car. Well, almost a brand new car. I love it, dude. Right away, you guys, you could hear the, hear that whine of the supercharger. I know, obviously, you and I have talked a lot about your car over the couple of years that I've known you, but for people that are watching, so you, you took, and I don't mean this, like, I don't ever want to compare and then, and then have to devalue what you've done, but it's, conceptually, it's the idea of what Singer has done with Porsche, or what Jonathan and Icon has done with Absolutely. Broncos and FJs, is you're, you're making a car that's a, a replicatable car. Absolutely. It's, it's called backdating. Right? You're taking a brand new chassis, you're adjusting it to look like uh, our iconic classics, like right. you're driving a brand new car, and it's replicatable, meaning we you know, created uh, parts for it that could be done over and over again right. for a client. So it's not there. like every single car that you build, you're re-engineering, you, you're, you're yeah. doing the same thing, it'll be semi-customable. Semi semi -custom Correct. Yeah. Exactly. And it, what, what it does is makes the process quicker for clients, so customers can get their car within seven months instead of waiting a year and a half for some super custom. Sure. Uh, all of the components can be adjusted to clients' needs. You know, they, they, they don't want black leather, they want something else, they don't want Alcantara. That's all, that's all easily it's adjusted. Super easy but stuff. But the, the process and the body is all created and done and uh, very easily. It's funny, you know, it's, it, what's interesting right away, dude, is you hear the little wind noise, and that's because you've got 67 windows on here. That's correct. It's a 67 body. You have to remember that certain things we kept on this car to look uh, the part, which is 67 parts. Right. So they still work like 67 parts, even though we've made them new, but uh, like the windows, we try to add much more uh, sound deadening, soundproofing, yeah. more of the uh, weather stripping around right. to prevent all that. Uh, so if you compare this to a real 67 that you're driving, we wouldn't be able to talk right now. Probably. No, no, there'd be yeah. so much wind yeah. noise, we and wouldn't. Wind noise, engine noise, everything. Else. Sure. Not to mention we'd probably be getting pummeled by exhaust fumes. I've got <laughs> zero exhaust fumes happening here. Exactly. And you want some nice AC? Here's some nice AC. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, so engine is it a? It's a Coyote motor in here? Or no, no? Uh, Shelby. So in 2014, Shelby produced a five eight liter, uh, 662 horsepower motor. So that's what's in this. And, and the, we keep the cars stock unless the clients want something souped up. Right. But really, you don't need to. The car is lighter now with carbon fiber by 400 pounds. So Massive. it becomes I mean, absolutely. If you lose 400 pounds off off of a car with 600. 
60 horsepower and that much torque, you actually have trouble with traction. So right. luckily this car has traction control, launch control, all those little nice toys, you know, for you to keep your car on the road. Right, right. <laughs> and airbags, just See, in case you didn't. So you're at 668 horsepower? 662 is stock. Yeah. So this, uh, but that's the 2014, the, the 2012 is a little bit less, but we uh, put a JLT intake on us and an uh, undergrad pulley. So just a couple of tweaks. Got it. You know, I wanted this car to be uh, drivable on the street without yeah. sucking crazy amounts of gas, right. being comfortable and enjoyable. Right. You know? So, and still looking the part. And right. if you want to get on it, She'll perform. Yeah, you can instantly tell there's a lot of car there. I've taken it off the canyons and she behaves uh, like a modern car should. I Actually, we had a little pleasant surprise. What happened was uh, because the chassis is wider than the 67 ever was by, well, four inches, right. uh, putting a 67 type shell on it, just the birdcage here, narrowed, uh, put the center of gravity inward a little bit more. Gotcha. So the car handles more like a go-kart on the track or on the roads yeah. than uh, being a, a big wobbly, you know, monster that she looks like. Right. She's actually uh, a pretty tight handling car. Yeah, yeah. Because of that. So you got modern Shelby motor then. You got all the transmission, drivetrain. everything is all... We keep the whole car underneath and the electrical. And that's why we're able to do all sorts of fun things with this. Right. Yeah. yeah you can keep your, all your four airbags. You have a great AC system. You have the Bluetooth and sound. Right. So you've and got every creature every comfort toy. that we're used to in a modern car. Yeah. But what people are seeing when you're driving around is they're looking at a 67 Correct. Shelby GT5. Well, we added some modern features, right? We wanted it uh, to look that you could tell that this is something different. Right? Yeah. So you could see it in the LED lights. You could see it in the turn signals with the LEDs. Uh, the backs, you know, have a, a daytime driving lights as well. Right. Interior-wise, like it, obviously you've you've taken it from what 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 was happening in '67, and you've definitely modernized it. I mean, all the diamond stitch interior, this big stitching on your on your dash and throughout the whole well, car. If you're the idea was you're driving um, what amounts to be a supercar these days, you want the interior to match. Absolutely. You want the Alcantara, yeah. uh, you want the customized interior, and yeah. uh, the car from about uh, chest level here, uh, from the dashboard down, is all new car. From this way up, the dashboard and up, we still kept all the 67 stuff. Right. So it's a half and half. Right. I mean, just, you know, obviously I'm not going fast, but you, you can feel it. It's a new car. It's, it's absolutely tight steering. Yep. There's no, uh, you know, you don't. You There's don't none of the play. The clutch is nice and tight, but it's 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 all it's all modern. I mean, it's all it's doing exactly what I expect it to do. Right. You know. So. Now you went with uh, what did you say the wheel company is? Uh, Password JDM made our custom three-piece wheels. Right. They're CNC machined um, and made specifically for this type of car. Right. What happened was we needed a. A very wide tire in the back to keep to all deal this with horsepower. the horsepower. Sure. But uh, because the body's a little bit um, narrower on top than the track width of the car, we had it to do a super positive offset on the wheels. Gotcha. So to keep uh, those are 11 inch wheels on there, uh, we needed to make absolutely custom wheels. And on the front, that was the biggest problem was we have huge Brembo's on there from Shelby. Gotcha. Stock Shelby Brembo's. Right. But to fit that 44 millimeter caliper into a, a narrower body, and so that the, the wheel doesn't stick out and you don't have to flare the whole car. Right. Uh, it was a it was a challenge. It's one of the things I love about your the flares on here is they're they're the Shelby flare. It's not you didn't go aggressive wide body. It's not it's not so radical where you. I mean I think this car. I remember the first time I saw this actually was two years ago at the Rodeo um, Concourse. Oh, Concourse, that's right, mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, it was one that I, obviously, it caught my eye right away because it's, I, I think it's one of the sexiest cars ever, it's the 67 GT500. Yeah, it's a pretty car. And then as I was getting closer to it, your hood was open, I was like, oh, okay, what's this guy got going on <laughs> over here, you know? And it's, exactly. uh, it's 
Well, because I'm with you. I'm, I'm a driver. I like to drive cars, and, and this thing, I can only imagine what a blast it is. Absolutely. Canyon driving. Because um, you've got the brake package. You've got the big Brembo brakes on here, so you've got all the stopping power. Suspension. It's and is it the stock what comes with that car? We actually we updated this suspension for track use. Okay. Uh, so that's why it's a little bit rougher on the roads daily driving. But so what is the well what are the coilovers on it? Steena coilovers. Okay. And they're spectacular for this car. We had them dialed in. And they're uh, fully so adjustable. Fully adjustable shows. That's I mean, just, I noticed you have serious audio on here. I mean, Focal is like no no BS. We went a little bit uh, overboard maybe with. Uh, 13, 14, I forget how many speakers we have in here, but... Is there that many in here? I oh, mean, I well, see them all. Well, three here. Right. You have um, a tweeter uh, where your fan panel there used to be. Right. There's a mid in the bottom. There's yep. uh, five by nines in the back under the windshield. Here, and then under I the think rear. I saw a sub and in the, the trunk, right? In the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's classy sub. I don't know, yeah. that's what I like to call it. Oh, Focal is great, dude. Yeah. They, they do. And we had the guys at uh, uh, Allen Al Eds do that for us. And oh, okay. Cool. Uh, spectacular. Uh, and some other little bits that you just pointed out before we took off on the drive. I love that you put instead of a fire extinguisher there, you got a, a cigar yeah. humidor. The fire extinguisher is behind your seats, and we have a little gentleman's kit that you guys will see uh, on the video. Because you never know when you're on a road trip and you need a little nip, a little cigar. Exactly. Right? It's a <laughs> this is a gentleman's car that can do everything. I was thinking, I was channeling James Bond. Right. But in an American classic. <laughs> That's all. Wow, and then if you stand on it, it's... Yeah, it's exactly... I mean, I've driven... 12 and 13 GT 500s. I mean, it, that's what it feel, it really does feel like that car. Absolutely. You know, there's no reason it shouldn't. The only thing is, it's a little bit lighter and um, a little bit more nimble. I mean, I'm a big fan of both Singer and Icon. I, I love the idea, and I mean, the prices are outrageous. Still, you know, half a million dollars for a air cooled Porsche, but when you see what the car is, when you drive, I've had the luck of getting to drive two of those cars, and they're wonderful yeah i'm jealous <laughs> and then the you know same thing with jonathan and the icons and i and i love that that that's what you're doing here dude is that you're making a car that that you're going to be able to replicate this over and over and over with subtle changes so owners can feel like they have yeah, somewhat of a custom you know they're absolutely we allow them they can uh, change the scoops you know they can do a little bit different hoods right uh, it's uh, if they want to go more classic we can do that as well right we're trying to chase that quality that's why singer is able to get that kind of uh, coin for their, their cars because the quality is there absolutely so we're trying to uh, improve and chase that and become that kind of quality and have fun it sounds great i i actually like that what you hear more than the exhaust is the whine of the supercharger that's a Ford thing. If you want super loud exhaust, sure, but... Uh, Wouldn't be hard to do yeah, on this at all. it's not hard to do, yeah. No. This is the stock Borla, uh, but if you wanted to go with something like Cervini and uh, get yourself a throw to your sound, right. it's all doable. This yeah, is yeah. A, a brand new car that has so many parts made for it aftermarket that you can improve it in so many different ways. Sure. So, and if something goes wrong, you take it to the Ford dealer. They can plug in the OBD. <laughs> It'll tell them what the codes are. The one-off custom, a lot of times those get absurdly expensive. You know what I mean? I, I've got customs that I've dealt with that are half a million to million dollar cars. Um, but those are one-offs. But I'm curious, like this prototype car, because from here you've perfected to where you can replicate. Correct. So the prototypes are always going to be twice as much. Uh, oh, yeah. Section. Nice and easy here. Yeah. The prototypes are always going to be twice as much as, uh, or if not more, what your production car will cost. Because it's R&D. Until you perfect the whole car, you're in it for 300 k Right. Uh, so is that is that about where you're at on this first car? For the first car? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Got it. That's so now for the guy that for the guy that says, dude, I, I love this car, I want one. Um, what's what's the cost to to produce this car for that guy? Basically, we take, uh, we'll go source uh, a new Shelby, 
Right. We're working on the newer ones, the S550 chassis, but right. we'll go source in 2014 with low miles and uh, do our, you know, the whole process and uh, the out the door price for the client, even with all of these crazy options, would be about 180. 180. So for this, so for this car, a guy's looking at about 180 grand. Correct. And uh, for a semi-custom production for something so unique. It's such an incredibly great price point where, where you're at, Mike. I love your concept with this, Mike. I, 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 I hope I hope Mag, which we haven't even said the name of your company. It's Mag Motors, you guys. Uh, Mag Motors. Matt, M-A-G. We're here in Van Nuys. It's By Mag the way, you guys, something we didn't even mention about this. Michael <laughs> said that we, he lightened the car with carbon fiber. Yeah. What he didn't tell you is that Pretty much every bit of the exterior of this car, barring the doors and the roof, those are steel, but the rest of the car is carbon fiber. Correct. Yeah. Oh, uh, look at what's in front of us here, you guys. What do we got? Ooh. Check this out, you guys, just Let's to throw off subject here. Let him buy. Let him buy. There's the R50. Look at that. Oh, man. That's a gorgeous car. We got to go chase this thing. I know. Oh, oh it's going on the, the truck. Follow him on the truck. <laughs> Check it out, you guys. That's the little bit you get of the GTR 50. Woo. Sexy, man. Oh. Nice. Everything about this car just feels right, dude. I, I've been, it's so cool. I've been, I mean, I've known you two years two or years something. Now? Yeah. And, and Can't this is the first time yet. I'm getting to drive your car, man. And I, I'm just I, it, absolutely loving this. It's mostly because I was uh, scared to show it to you. All right, you guys, well, that's it for Michael and Mag Motors, the 67 meets 2012 GT500. What a cool car, man. I mean, this, this really is a car. You could drive this every single day. You could go out and pound the hell out of it, be it track, canyon driving. This is a full modern performance car, but it looks like this, man. I mean, one of the most iconic body styles ever. There's nothing, nothing like a 67 GT500. This car's got brakes, it's got suspension, it's got chassis. You know, you got the trans, you got the motor, you got everything from the modern car, Bluetooth, all the modern stuff that we love, all the creature comforts that we love. And it looks like this. I'm just totally blown away. And this is a company I've watched growing over the last couple of years. I've become good friends with Michael. And to finally get to drive this car, I'm just knocked out, man. I'm, I'm bummed that my uh, checkbook doesn't allow me to write a $180,000 check to buy this car. But think about it, you guys. 180 grand for something on this level. I mean, this is the first one I've seen that's, that's in a price point that's, that's it, it actually adds up. It makes sense. Anyways, I'm just totally blown away. I hope you guys had a good time today. I had a blast getting to drive this thing and getting to talk more with Michael about the development of this car. Um, so as always, man, I got to say thanks for hanging and watching and supporting the channel, helping us to continue growing it. I really appreciate all your support and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later.